One of the coolest things about Carnegie Mellon is the amount of collaboration you get between schools, departments, uh, people with all different backgrounds. One of the ways that I think is cool to foster that collaboration is to just bring people together to work on some little projects over the course of a week, and I call that a jam. In this jam, we were bringing together fabric and sound. So we have folks here who are experts on sound design, sound synthesis, sound engineering, and folks who are expert on textiles and robotics. And everybody is working together, learning new things, generally trying to create in this limited format. And we look for participants who are actually willing to put in at least three days on the jam. We don't want people to just drop in and then drop back out. We want people to be able to dedicate their time because uh, I find that produces the best kind of results. But unlike, say, a hackathon, uh, we're not working in specific teams, we're collaborating, and there's no contest here. It's about co-creating. So a secondary theme of the jam that emerged was using analog signal paths. Very little of what you're going to see here is digital. Uh, almost always the sound is being processed and generated by analog circuitry exclusively, uh, possibly po post-processed digitally or sequenced digitally. But it's something that not a lot of us actually had experience doing and we wanted to learn more about. The projects we actually ended up gelling around. Piezo sensed fabric drum. We made a photo sensor based um, playable fabric instrument, which I think we're calling the fabric accordion. We produced a resistively sensed synth controller. We made a inductively sensed fabric tape loop. So we're using all these different kinds of sensing and all these different analog signal paths to get fabric involved in sound. Conductive yarns, which is a process we've been using to do things like make robot sensing skins. Here, we're using that same technology to give us customizable conductive resistive yarns for use in these projects. Just plain old yarn. Now, if you take that yarn, and there are a variety of processes to do this, uh, and add something conductive to it, like silver plating, or stainless steel fibers, or nickel plating, you can make conductive yarn actually has much the same hand feel as a non-conductive yarn. Whereas this yarn is sort of mega ohms per centimeter resistance. It's very basically an insulator. This yarn is ohms per centimeter. Maybe, I think this is 10 ohms per centimeter. This yarn makes a really good sensor because when you compress it, it makes more contact with itself and it gets more conductive. The fabric drum and the fabric accordion are both using means of sensing the fabric, vibration and light that don't require conductive textiles. They can use any fabric. The fabric tape loop and the resistive fabric controller both are using that resistive yarn as part of their sensing scheme. The resistive fabric controller is using it in a very simple way. Uh, it's just measuring the resistance and the change in that resistance as the yarn is stretched. The tape loop is using it in a very complicated way. That resistance is allowing a signal to be created, broadcast electromagnetically, and then picked up by an inductive pickup. Uh, I'm a second year master student in RI and also incoming PhD. So uh, this is our small project based on this lab jam. So it's called Right Sound. We have a fabric drum, so like the whole surface is a drum. And then once we uh, strike on it or slide on it or just a little gentle touch on it, it will uh, make some different sounds based on the uh, different like uh, touching pattern. We have a piezoelectric sensor behind this Right Sound. And so once we um, have some like a contact with the drum, the vibration will be picked up based on this sensor. So then the analog signal will be turned into the uh, sound later. I think like for the whole like a drum is like a scene. So these are like some farm field. There's a um, Chinese song called uh, Red Song. So this is its name. It's called Hong Ri. You have a fabric tape loop that has conductive parts, the gray parts, and non-conductive parts, the purple parts, running over more conductive fabric, which are running a signal from a oscillator. When the conductive fabric, the gray parts, meets this kind of fabric reed head, the signal from here is broadcast into these conductive squares, which is then picked up by this um, inductive sensor and amplified and sent to the speakers. So you kind of get like a gated effect picking up these mechanical or like electromechanical oscillations. One intelligence output a 
uh, oscillating high and low voltage. Um, and that frequency can be controlled by resistors and capacitors. I was able to make an adjustable version of that that controls the frequency that is being input into these two squares. These different patterns uh, cause different resistances across this circuit. For example, these like thicker materials have lower resistance, so it would output a higher voltage. We can change the speed with motor, and we can change this pitch with motor speed, but I think it's more interesting to do that with this pattern, knitting pattern, not motor speed. Oh wait, I think I know how to do it. So it's 8.7. There we go. Look at that. Ha, ha, ha.